Yeah, morning, everyone. Uh, it's my first time at WeShare, so I'm uh, very excited to see this incredible venue. It's also the first time I've worn one of these mics, so I feel a bit like Madonna, which is uh, adding to the nerves. Um, but today, uh, hopefully, I'm going to take you on a quick whirlwind journey of some of the stuff that we've been doing in a place called Birmingham. Has anybody ever been to Birmingham here? Birmingham, UK? Whoop, whoop. Well, not enough of you. You definitely need to come and visit us. So um, Birmingham, you can find it right in the middle of uh, the UK. It's not up north, as the Londoners like to tell us. We are right in the middle. Uh, and we're a post-industrial city with a population of about 1.1 million. Interestingly, approximately 40% of the population is under, under 35, so we have a fairly young uh, demographic. Um, we have more than 50 languages spoken, 35% uh, of... Um, of the uh, population is from a minority ethnic background. And so we've got a really interesting mix of people. But Birmingham also has quite large challenges. We have so severe local authority cuts uh, about to hit us. Local government is facing mass restructuring. There is large inequalities between neighborhoods. And actually, um, Birmingham has some of the highest rates of child poverty in the UK. Um, and Birmingham is archetypal of the future that many cities are facing right now. It's going through an incredible boom, huge amounts of inward investment, lots of new development, and at the same time, it sits in this backdrop of um, quite challenging statistics. And so this really got us thinking about, and when I tell you a bit more about my background, you'll understand why, what are the new types of civic institutions that are going to exist and pop up and grow in places like Birmingham? How are we going to move away from uh, looking at an approach that just, um, just focuses on uh, a better world? How are we going to start to look at a better city? How are we going to go from fixing the market to changing the system, away from term sheets to smart contracting, startup funding to looking at system funding, business plans to business engines, product innovation to system innovation, from heroic founders to collaborative founders? We were thinking about a lot of this. And the reason why we're thinking about a lot of this is because actually to date, the journey that we've been on shows that actually we need a more whole approach to the way we're gonna uh, create change in the cities that we're from. So let's take an example. If you're looking to uh, change the educational outcomes in a neighborhood, an app might be part of that story. A great startup may well be part of that story. A um, fantastic campaign might be part of that story. Local government funding into new teachers might be part of that story. Innovative architecture and new buildings and new spaces and new public realm may well be part of that story. We know that there's many, many factors that would add up to change the outcomes in, say, education or any other large system in a neighborhood. But currently what we found is that we're really organized around the startup around the tech innovation. We're still uh, using single point magic bullets to try and solve complex, wicked challenges. Birmingham, as well as many cities, are full of these wicked challenges. As the startups boom, we still have high rates of child poverty. As we see new innovations and new buildings, we still have parts of the city uh, not been touched for more than 40 years. Fifth, there are areas in Birmingham where uh, the rates of child poverty have not even changed slightly in 50 years. But around them, many of the citizens can see all this innovation and incredible things coming about. And this really got us thinking about what are the new types of civic institutions that are going to be able to organize and actually start to make a dent on some of these wicked challenges. And that takes me to the kind of place where I can talk a little bit about. I'm from Impact Hub Birmingham. I'm one of the founders of the Impact Hub in Birmingham. And I've been really, really privileged to be around a number of people who've seen this journey since day one in the Impact Hub network. Ten years ago, just over ten years ago, in Islington, the network grew from a small group of founders. People who were starting to come together and understanding that change for them was not going to be working in the big institutions or in the big charities or working um, in, in the traditional spaces that they could see. And they were trying to think about how they could uh, uh, organize around this. We were seeing communities of like-minded people coming together when traditionally at that time you were organized by architects or accountants or small um, other groups of, of practice. However, these people were coming together around a shared purpose, a shared mission. They were really starting to think about how they could share infrastructure, share spaces. Around that time, there was about two co-working spaces in London. And so grew 
the impact hub. And at this time, what was really interesting, we were seeing the rise of ethical businesses, things like the Ethical Fashion Forum and other things were starting to come out of the hub. It was really at the height of the fair trade movement. And it was a really interesting time for many of the people involved. Around five years ago, five years into the network, it was starting to grow in a different way. We were starting to see the super studios, the huge impact hubs in Westminster, in Seattle, in the backdrop of an ecosystem of startups, venture capitalists, a lot of the funding that we were starting, um, social uh, funding that we were starting to com see coming about at that point. And what was happening at this point is we were really starting to move more towards a products and services type approach to social innovation. You'd have these huge spaces, these great startup accelerators, incubators, and the finance to match it. Largely what I'd say is borrowed or grown from sort of the tech Silicon Valley style model. We were really starting to see that coming into the um, social space. But having said all this, if you stepped outside of the door in Impact of Westminster or in Seattle or here in San Francisco, you were still stepping over homeless people to get into your ethical coffee bar or into your great uh, open source desk in the middle of the hub. That's not to do down the incredible work that was happening. We'd come far, but we certainly hadn't come far enough. We had not yet shifted the outcomes or driven local system change in the places with great need. We hadn't seen the type of change that we had really strove to grow some of these things from. And this really got us to think more deeply about what was going to be needed in the future? How would we be able to uh, really grow the institutions that were required for the change that we were truly passionate about? And so we started to see a new age. You were starting to see places like Impact Hub Oakland, who effectively, in my opinion, is like a 21st century civil rights movement. The founders there had intentionally put a focus on place. They had intentionally grown the legitimacy and community around Oakland, around out outcomes in Oakland. They were, un they were boldly talking about black rights. They were setting up uh, programs, interventions into some of the most difficult challenges that they really cared about. And it wasn't just about impact hubs. All around we were th seeing things like uh, a good friend of mine, Megan Deal, in Cincinnati was working on something called People's Liberty, which is really looking at how f philanthropy could be reformed to really start to have a, a, a deep, intentional impact on place. Places like Zurich were starting to organize more specifically around their mode of change, be that business. We were seeing in, in the UK and around huge, uh, incredible... Um, programs and interventions into uh, mass civic participation. The Open Works in London was a really great example of it. And going back to the Impact Hub network, in the UK, we'd had four hubs in the centre of London for 10 years, and no regional city was yet to do it. There was something that needed to change it. There was something that needed to be thought about, about how places like hubs and other type of um, organisations and civic institutions would start to emerge. And that got us thinking about what was, what was the ingredients for this. We understood that new models of finance were going to be needed to uh, really uh, realize the system's future, and we'll talk a bit, little bit more about that tomorrow in the Adventurous Capital um, panel. And that's not a plug, that's just to let you know we are going to talk about it. Um, but also about legitimacy. What, who, how did we create these legitimate spaces where citizens could really step up and take control of their places and really start to make the cities around them? And like I mentioned before, who were these movements of actors? How were we going to start to organize around the many, many parts of the system we knew were needed in order to actually make a dent on any of the outcomes? And so we started to really think about something called the town hall for system change. And we quite specifically have used the language of the town hall, where democracy isn't really decided by the vote, but is actually decided about who is able to participate how are they be able to make um, the cities around them? How can many, many people come together to start to really realize the outcomes that we've talked about earlier? And so for us, legitimacy looked something like this. We went on a four or five year journey. TEDx may be a platform that you know uh, well, and there's many other platforms that could do it. But over many years, we started to grow an ideas-led, um, open-minded, possibility-led uh, community through a number of events. We openly built the hub which led to, just at the beginning of last year, us reaching a crowdfunder of nearly £65,000 where 700 people invested in what I would say the future of Birmingham. We didn't talk about opening an impact hub. We talked about growing a community that was focused on Mission Birmingham. 
actually deeply changing uh, the, the things that we know have stayed the same over many, many years, really starting to have a, a, a city that could believe its future could change. This is the hub now. It was openly built by many, many people in the city. It was openly funded by many people, building on the talk, talk behind that we just talked about. It also means that we're now accountable to the city. We have all the usual things. We're growing a, a member community, a community of change makers, whether they be artists, poets, all the way to designers, small startups. But actually what we're not doing is just getting people to join us as members. We want people to join the, the hub because they really are passionate about the mission of Birmingham. At the same time, we're starting to think about what are the other ingredients that we're going to need to realize this future. And so we're working on a number of things. We're looking at radical childcare, which is one of our first prototypes into um, how you actually do system change accelerators. We're doing things like open project night where citizens can come and openly make and build their projects. We're starting to learn how to host communities um, around learning. And this is going to be really important because actually, as we move away from heroic founders, we're going to need to move towards much more collaborative types of leadership where everybody is able to participate, where we're growing the collective intelligence of the system and we're starting to really bring everybody into this journey. And some of the things that I think what I have really learned from this journey, and I want to just share a few of them. This is just from my own perspective, but over the last few years, what I've really learned is that we need to build authentic in invitations to shared challenges. It wasn't about come and join the Impact Hub, come and join me, come and join IMI. Actually, we needed to create a mission that was far bigger than all of us, something that would unite many, many people. Uh, learning to build communities that are more interested in the outcome as opposed to the attribution. Instead of it being about me, it really being about where we want to take Birmingham. We hear a lot of words like co-design and co-production and uh, service design and lots and lots of um, methodologies for how we truly engage people. But one of the things that I've learned is that things like system change are not a methodology that you can just put on. You can't just put a new uh, fancy methodology on a group of people or on an area and suddenly start to see um, huge outcomes. Over the last five years, this has been about authentically growing the capacity of a community, growing the collective intelligence of the community, building it slowly but surely, and actually bringing many, many people into that journey. It hasn't just happened from a new fancy startup, a new fancy idea, actually building the capacity of people to be able to actually make change, as well as all, all the ideas, is, is, has been really important. Like I said before, actually investing into building the collective cap capability and intelli intelligence of the system is one of the most important things. Moving away from one or two really smart people coming in and saying, we've mapped the challenges, this is what you need to do. Actually, from growing the capacity of a community to do this, to grow uh, the change that they want to see. And from this, when you are now um, accountable to the crowd, what does many, many to many accountability look like? How do you truly bring uh, people into the decision making? How do you uh, let go of the idea? How do you create open missions whereby you are not only just looking after your own, in, uh, your own, um, your own kind of um, outcomes, you're also looking at what is a wider movement? And I think, for me, the biggest thing is actually, if you don't love what you're doing, there isn't really any other way. For us, this comes from a deep commitment to the city that we're from. It's where the authenticity comes from. It's where the drive to create things against the tide really comes from. And whilst I've said a few things today that some of them might be interesting and some of them not, this is really a journey. This is some insights. There are so many parts of the model that we still need to discover together. And actually, one of the most important things that I think we found in the city that I'm from is that you can't just create a silver bullet and think that you're going to solve the challenges. This is about many, many people coming together, many actors across public, civic, private, coming together on a shared mission, bringing their resources, growing new, f new models, new forms of financing, new civic institutions, and actually coming together to solve the wicked challenges. The startups are great. The single ideas are fantastic, but actually, until we start to come together and still we start to build the new institutions that can bring these movements of actors together, we're not going to really be not stepping over homeless people when we step into our new, uh, 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 new and fancy ideas. 
And so my call to arms is really about us coming together to understand how we truly share and learn from each other and how we create intentional missions in our places to create the change we really want to see. Thank you.